and we can't get in. Uh, so it's very difficult. But the rest of the world is, is coming up. Um, Europe is probably way better, and Asia, and uh, there's a lot of places you can go with your music, and it's important that you start getting this great music out there. If I can add a, a bit to that, you know, I think uh, no matter what the territory, or the, uh, the, the funding system, the only trick is to just, as you said, like, go where you want to go. Like, if you want to go to Canada, well, try to come many times be seen and you know just play your your best and that's that's how you're going to get noticed and something will happen you know because i'm i'm always on the side of trying to push bands outside and everybody's telling me oh you know here you have to come often i'm like yeah i know you have to do that every everyone has to do that there's no special trick you know there's nothing to be there's no no one has a special formula that's what i mean it's just be there and maybe focus on one territory or two and try to make it happen and just go back and back and that's that's probably the, the only way to, that I know you know I don't, I don't know any other way to do it so that's uh, that's my thing there ali no alto ah tem aqui primeiro depois você lá tá bom uh hello uh, my name is erica um, i'm an artist um, i was just recently in montreal it was a wonderful experience And I was very um, interested in how the city is just so amazing and, and effervescent with music, and especially electronic music. Um, I was just curious, like, I would really love to go back there and participate in the, the festival scene, but, you know, as an, a DIY artist, it's a little difficult to get my hands on things like... Uh, She's really good. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and um, how, how do you go about um, getting to festivals? I mean, is there some kind of form you have to fill in? Um, how, how do you break into that? I think it's, it's more about... Yeah. Friends, you got this? <laughs> uh, well, I guess it really depends on each particular uh, festival. For Pop Montreal specifically, we have a submission uh, process. So you could just... Well, you could talk to me after and... I can give you more information. That would probably be easy. You can, um, you know, we can keep in touch or whatever. But yeah, we have a submission form. Like you go to our website. It's pretty straightforward. Um, you know, most most of the bigger festivals don't have like like the showcase festivals. Like I don't know what Sim is like, but the other ones like South by Southwest, all the like industry showcase festivals have some sort of public form where you can submit your music. Um, the bigger, you know, like the Jazz Festival of Montreal or like, you know, Primavera, you don't, sub you can't submit to these festivals. You just have to either they ask you or you have a booking agent. Like you have to get to a certain level before you can approach those bigger kind of like high profile like festivals. But the showcase festivals all have um, submission forms. Um, and I mean, my advice personally, Uh, for the for uh, playing a showcase is like I think they're important. They're not like it's you're not necessarily going to get a, a label and a booking agent and a ton of um, business out of it the first time, especially. But they're a good way to meet other artists, to network, you know, to kind of get a, a better understanding of how the music industry works, especially for your first few times. So even if, even if you go not as a performer, like just to go, just like being here right now, exchanging ideas, meeting people. I think it's a good start to, you know, beyond like making music and building a community within the city you live live in and, 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 and playing shows with people. I mean, I think it's all part, it's like, a, it's an ecosystem that you have to, that you have to really build and, and kind of nurture, you know, but uh, yeah, I guess that's sort of it, but we can talk after and I can give you more info. There, um, the, the woman that, uh, takes care of the Australian export, who's here, called Millie Millgate. She has an expression that she calls go before you show. Um, and that's a pretty good idea of like, especially for like 
if you really don't know what's happening in that area, it's your first time, you don't know the market, or like it's a huge thing like South By. I mean, like seriously, South By is very nice. It's like the biggest showcasing festival in the world. But I mean, if you go there and nobody knows who you are and you don't know anybody, man, you're going to be sad at the end of South By. The South. You're going to like, I spent a lot of money and, you know, it really wasn't. You know, my four Brazilian friends came to the show and, you know, the drunk guy walked in. Uh, so you have to be like going... Uh, first and checking, like sort of making contacts and, and seeing what's really happening there to evaluate whether it's it's relevant for you is is a really good thing. And um, with regards to all festivals in general, um, generally, I mean, the whole music business tends to function on a they want to notice you, like they want to discover you. So if you can find a way to leave a trail of breadcrumbs that lead to you that they can follow, it's usually a lot more uh, effective than if you go into somebody's face and start like, you know, totally frontally selling what you are and what you are and they don't know who you are. They kind of go, ah, kind of like, like a, a, a couple, like a guy or girl or two girls or two guys or whatever, where if the person's like too intense, you're like, ah, and you sort of like back off. It's the same kind of thing with the music. They, uh, we tend to react a lot better when it comes at us like in a more charming, seductive and we you know, we get into it step by step and like, you know, and then at the end, huh, we're in, enamored and seduced by the whole thing. And, and, and it's referral based as well. Like this is totally, totally a person based business. It's all about the people, all about the people. I mean, it's the music and then the people. And so half the time, you know, people that I know that get booked on events, it's usually because somebody else that they trust their opinion told them about it or something like that. All the time, and just to go back maybe to your question uh, before, <coughs> you know, uh, signing or working with a band from, um, you know, outside of your country is also, you, you look at what's behind, you know, is it the person alone and not, won't do anything before coming? Or, you know, if, if, if a band is really interesting, I love the band and I know they have like a, a manager or, or themselves are really proactive, then that's something that can interest me, you know, to, to work because I don't want to just I'm, I'm like that also when I when I try to push my bands, I make sure that people understand that I'm going to be working the project and I'm not just looking for somebody, you know, to work it and I can turn around and do something else. So it's really important to, to, uh, to, to feel the, the real, the, the, the will to work, you know, uh, the, 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 whole th yeah, the, the whole drive thing, you know, to be like t totally passionate about it. I mean, it's, it's usually the case, but sometimes, uh, you, you know, you have people come to you and I want to go play your country and I'm like, okay, but what's you know what what do you have you know besides the, the music which can be interesting but sometimes sometimes there's yeah, nothing yeah. to back it up so so that's that's the main we look at that you know um, first and foremost for example we work at, sometimes we work, work with uh, french bands who usually the 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 number that usually they're booked their booking agent there will book the show will produce the show outside so you know that if you book some shows they will come and they will work it and you know the the they will show up, you know. Sometimes you don't, you don't know. You work with bands, and oh, I'm canceling the show because I didn't find the money, or I didn't, you know. So you don't want that to happen. You you, you want to make sure that, you know, if if you you want to come to Canada, I'll make sure, and I'm interested. I'll make sure that you you can back it up. That's the, that's the main thing for me. Show, vou dar uma eu eu vou dar uma experiência sobre isso assim ó. Não faz nenhum sentido você ir viajar para visitar o país, investir uma grana, se você não tem o recurso para investir a segunda vez. Não, nunca, em nenhuma oportunidade, faça aquilo se você não pode fazer duas vezes. Se for a única chance da sua vida, não vá, porque você vai perder o dinheiro. É muito importante que você saiba isso. Porque, ou então você esteja preparado para fazer um passeio. Um passeio você pode fazer uma vez, mas construir uma ação de música, um negócio de música, você não estiver preparado para a segunda vez, não vá, simplesmente isso. E o que a Mili disse, que é, é go first, then, como é que é? What was the, the sentence? Go before you show. Show you go before you show. show before you é muito importante, muito importante. Se eu, tive, eu fui no Salto by Salto a primeira vez em 2001, acho que a gente foi a segunda banda brasileira a tocar lá. 
Se eu tivesse ido em dois, se eu tivesse vindo em 2001, em 2002 para assistir e tivesse ido com a minha banda em 2004, teria sido 100 mil vezes melhor. Porque depois você já gastou todo o dinheiro e você não pode investir de novo. Então é muito importante. Se você já foi em Montreal, já sabe como é a cena, já é legal, você já sabe onde tem um fit para você, é aí que você pode investir de novo. É, faz para mim faz totalmente sentido se você pode fazer duas vezes. Você pode fazer uma vez, só vai ser um passeio. Pode ser um passeio mais legal da sua vida, entendeu? Mas vai ser um passeio. É, aquela amiga lá de... It's a, the long term thing is important. You know, yes. it has to be. You have to, no results will come. Uh, you know, tomorrow it's, it'll be uh, in ten years maybe. Like you were saying, you, you've been doing that. You've been you've known Dan for ten years, and now it's you know it's yeah. it's now working. I love him. Yeah, I know. <laughs> now it's a love story. That's. It's a love story. You know, yes. But it, it wasn't just a, a, wo a one night stand. You know. No, it's <laughs> not. It's so beautiful. It's, 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 a, it's a love forever. Uh, speaking of, of love, I would like to s take a moment to... I mean, you're all going to go, oh, he's kissing our ass. But I would like to say that Brazilians are probably seriously the warmest and nicest, friendliest people anywhere. And it's a huge... Hu first of all, it's a joy to, to come here and hang out and meet you guys because everyone's like that pretty much. But it's a huge advantage for you guys as a people and as, a, as an industry and as a culture because people are going to like you, you know? If you've ever done business with Americans, I don't want to be jerk to Americans a second time in the same conference, <laughs> but it's very, very business. It's very business. There's some wonderful people in America, but it's very, very business oriented and it can be a bit of a drag sometimes, you know, because you don't have that second level of you know, the human dynamic, which is just important because we're human beings. So I, I think that, you know, the, I was saying before that the music's really great here and has been for a long time, but you also have a really great kind of um, cultural personality as a, as a country overall and so much to offer the world. Um, it's important that you, you get out there and, um, you know, and show people, you know, that great Brazilian, like in Hawaii, they have it, aloha spirit. I don't know what the Brazilian spirit is, but there should be a word for it because it exists. And, um, and then the other thing I wanted to quickly say is you guys might be wondering or not, so I'm talking uselessly, but um, you might be wondering what's the Canadian market actually like? Uh, you know, like, what kind of music are people into or whatever? Um, so it's pretty open. It's, it's quite, uh, there's a lot of diversity. There's definitely... Uh, a scene of folk festivals in every city, uh, some world music festivals and some jazz festivals, which are kind of the same thing, really, now. They've all kind of become like those kind of not pop indie festivals, uh, although they have some of that in them as well. Um, so there's a definitely market for wor world music, which we call world music, which is a stupid word. But what I'm trying to get at is if you make a little bit more like traditional Brazilian music to some degree, that's where you're going to get stuck unless it's super, super modern uh, and indie. But there's a, a really good scene for that in Canada. There's lots of festivals and there's even a showcase festival called Mundial, which is associated to M for Montreal, which uh, brings a lot of the buyers uh, in uh, which you can try to play at this or go and go and then show at this festival where you can meet a lot of those uh, buyers for that. And then there's definitely a great pop and indie, uh, you know, music scene across Canada. Um, the last thing I want to say is there's two markets in Canada. Uh, one is Quebec and one is the rest of Canada. And it's very, very important to understand that there's not one market, there's two markets. I actually have, in most of my artists that I work with, even international artists, I have a Quebec booking agent and a Canadian booking agent and an American booking agent. And none of those people know how to do crap in the other market. So it's, if you really want to get the most out of each market, if you have the time to, to actually work the markets a little deeper, um, yeah, and, and, and anything you do in Quebec has to be handled very differently than you would handle it in Canada. Generally, what that means is that if you release something and the Canadians really like it first, Quebec will go like this, generally. That's what they're going to do. They're going to, oh, are people in Canada like it? Fuck you. That's what we tend to do. So if you can somehow get Canada to, to, or Quebec to, to fall in love with something before it becomes too popular in Canada, they'll embrace it themselves and you'll have the best of both worlds. And the, 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 the same is true the other way. Um, the really successful English Canadian bands from Quebec had to leave Canada to get 
uh, accepted in the rest of the, of the country. Um, Arcade Fire went straight to the US. They didn't bother with Canada, they went straight to the US and then came back. Uh, a band like Half Moon Run that I work with, they got ignored by Canada, like ignored. And they were a really good band. So, and it, it was because they were from Montreal and from Quebec. So it, it's a cultural but thing, it's a like linguistic they're thing. They're actually from BC though, right? Well, originally, but they, they formed and you know were known as a band from Quebec and that, for that reason, Toronto, which is our, I guess, your Sao Paulo or Rio, where the, the, you know, the industry and the media are, they just ignored them. So if you want to get the most out of the country, um, evaluate both markets and, and work them individually. G Gourmet you know, can talk about that because he knows. But, you know, one thing to understand is that Quebec, like Canada is about 30 million people and Quebec is almost close to 10 million. And then Ontario, the next province where Toronto is, is what? Another 10, 12, you know, so, so all the rest, all the like eight to, to 10 million is scattered all across the, the, the country. So the focus isn't really Quebec and, and, and Ontario, that's for sure. Well, we can say for the, a word about Vancouver, maybe just so that they know, the West Coast scene. Right, I mean, well, one point about, I don't know if we talked about this, but um, Canada is such a huge geographic country and it is a small population. So most artists who tour, whether they're Canadian or American, if they play in Canada, unless you're like a Quebec artist or an international ar artist who really focuses on the Quebec, because there's this whole like uh, touring circuit in just in Quebec with all these cultural centers throughout in this, these small towns. But that's a whole other story. Most artists, international touring artists, will only play Montreal, maybe Quebec City. But they'll do, like, if you're doing the West Coast, you'll do Los Angeles, San Francisco, um, Portland, Seattle, Vancouver, and then maybe you'll go to, like, Calgary, Edmonton, Winnipeg, and then go into Minnesota, Chicago, Detroit, Toronto, Montreal, then, you know, Boston, New York, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I mean, depending on, like, when you're touring, but you usually tour in chunks where you divide it by region because Canada is so huge to tour all the way across Canada, you know, is very, very long and there's not a lot in between. And don't come in the winter time because if you're stuck in Thunder Bay or in Ontario in a winter storm, a lot of shows get canceled. But then again, it can be a, an, an, a fun experience. Dan's correct uh, that most of the, um, I just want to say, most of the tours tend to route North America as a whole and include Canada. Um, however, for those of you who, who don't want to tour the U.S. or can't tour the U.S. for whatever reason, because it's a lot more difficult with the visas and a lot of other things, I just wanted to say quickly that Mexico as a market is absolutely blowing up right now. It is paying three times as much sometimes than America is for the same artists. Some of them completely unknown, and Mexico is a heck of a lot. You know, Canada is a lot easier to get to from Mexico than it is from Brazil. Hi, how are you? My name is Yoyo Borobia. I come from Venezuela and uh, I feel myself like Venezuelan in Spanish. And uh, here I am. And um, I was wondering, well, I've been living in Brazil for a few years and I just realized that uh, the niche for, for Spanish speaking artists here is pretty small compared to Portuguese or English speaking artists. And I wanted to ask you, what about Canada? What's what's going on there? Is it like open to other languages or is it mainly French and, and, and English that's going on like for? Well, like, uh, I mean, Montreal is a very big cosmopolitan city. Toronto is the same, maybe a little less Vancouver, but in all of those, in Tor especially Toronto and Montreal, there's fairly large like immigrant populations. So there's a lot of, you know, there's community. And like the way, my, like Canada is kind of like, there, there's like an emphasis to kind of keep your, your like your culture. So there, you know, the community. There's like, you know, I don't know how, how much of, of a Venezuelan uh, community there is, but I know there's like a big Chileno community and 
Colombian and you know so I'm speaking maybe. regarding regarding language more than than the community because I, I guess for example my music is playing a lot in, in Germany right. and I just felt like lots more you know interest even though it's not language that they speak in, in Germany rather than in Brazil even though I'm, I'm I'm producing songs with like very Brazilian rhythms you know right. I would say that Germany is one of the countries in the world with the most open-minded population. Yeah, that's for they sure. really kind of don't care that much what language you're singing in. That possibly because for many years um, they didn't have a strong uh, media that was telling them what to like or buy. The way, in, for example, in England, the BBC just dominates you know what people listen to. Germans were kind of brought up going to music or listen to music and making up their own minds whether they liked it or not. So they tend to have a very, very open-minded uh, attitude. I think Canada's fairly open-minded, but it's not as open-minded as Germany. It's probably more open-minded than America. Uh, America, really, unless you're Latino, I don't think anyone wants to listen to Latino music, uh, which is really sad because it can be really great. Um, however, when bands reach a certain level, outside of the world music thing, again, where you, you tend to get pigeonholed in if you don't sing in, in English or French, in the case of, of Quebec, um, when a band reaches a certain level, uh, or a certain quality level, I think people are really open. I brought a band from Argentina called Todos Sus Muertos um, to Canada about 15 years ago as well, and people really liked them a lot, and it didn't really matter that they were singing in Spanish because the band was really great. So yeah. it's, it's, it's doable, but it'll be smaller than, you know, it's not going to be everybody. It's going to be a piece of the market that's open-minded. Got it. Mais alguma pergunta? Agora uma pergunta. Eu fiquei ouvindo vocês, achei interessantes as colocações, mas simplesmente me vem assim, então, como fazer o show lá? <risos> Porque, assim, se, se o ideal é uma vez na frente para poder viajar e ter dinheiro para voltar a segunda vez. Mas ir no escuro também não adianta, mesmo que seja para prospectar alguma coisa. É, qual seria o caminho, de, por exemplo, eu trabalho com uma música de identidade brasileira, e eu gostei muito do que o Jean falava sobre essa questão da proteção da cultura na Austrália, porque eu também, no lema da empresa que eu trabalho, o nosso lema é isso, o povo que não tem identidade é, não é um povo, e ser nobre é ter identidade. Então, eu, eu gostei muito disso. Agora, eu tenho interesse de exportar a minha música, mas eu, qual é o caminho, por exemplo? Eu tenho interesse de, de fazer um trabalho lá, mas quem eu procuro para começar a me ajudar, inclusive, a ter esse olhar, porque chegar também na cidade para visitar, vou visitar o quê, quem, como? O que, é que vocês sugerem? Você quer responder primeiro, Fabrício, ou eu? Fabrício, você quer fazer isso? Eu acho que se você for para... Conference uh, events like like Sim, for example, I think that the idea of these events is actually to put you directly in touch and in relationship with with the kind of people that you need to be in relationship with to to know what to do and to know how the market is and to take you know to take a chance and 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 know where to go and know who to talk to, et cetera, et cetera. So if you decide to go to an event like Canadian Music Week or M for Montreal or Pop Montreal or, or, or Mundial or something like that, I think that's a great place to start because you will automatically meet a lot of people uh, who can really give you a lay of the land. Um, there might be also, I'm sure there is, this is Fabricio has to answer, but there must be local people here in Brazil who have knowledge uh, of the right people to reach out to when you go abroad, and you should probably consult with, with some of these people or organizations to get a sense of, you know, what's the right place to go and when's the right place to go and who should I speak to? What do you reckon? David McLaughlin. Hey. <laughs> Eu acho que tem que participar das coisas e, e dar uma, uma pesquisada naquilo que tem mais a ver com o seu artista. É, não adianta nada você ter uma banda de trash metal e visitar o Pop Montreal. Eu, por exemplo, nunca fui na... Os brasileiros adoram ir na Womex. E, para mim e para o Dota, por exemplo, a Womex não serve para nada mais pro pro Fiote, para pro, pro pessoal do de Recife, 
pra, serve para tudo. Não faz sentido eles irem para o South by South. Tem que ter uma pesquisa nisso e, e, e nas conferências de música. Felizmente, tem assim São Paulo que está dando algumas entradas aqui. entendeu Talvez não seja tão abrangente é, como fosse possível a gente ter alguém de um festival mais de world music no Canadá é, sentado nessa mesa também. O foco aqui é um pouco mais indie, pop, eletrônico, etc. Mas, mas para quem está nesse nicho, talvez é, sejam os melhores contatos do Canadá, entendeu? Então, assim, tem que, tem que pesquisar, tem que ir nos lugares, tem que conhecer as coisas. E tem pessoas chaves no Brasil para fazer isso. Tem gente que... Por exemplo, o Dago é um cara de São Paulo aqui que tem um acesso... É um grande amigo do Daniel, aconselha ele, mostra bandas para ele. Eu, por exemplo, faço, é, faço a curadoria, uma pré-curadoria para o Primavera Sound, Primavera Pro na Espanha, que também passa pela gente, a gente apresenta por lá. Esse tipo de conferência que coloca a gente nessas, nessas condições. Porque eles também... Eu, 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 eu sou convidado para ir muitos, ficam super curioso para... Ontem os australianos estavam à noite desesperado para ouvir a música que ele que servia para o evento deles, entendeu? Então assim precisa. Ontem a hora que o cara chegou lá no Mancha ele quase morreu. Nossa, achei o que eu queria, entendeu? Porque ele queria aquela música. Então tem que é isso, tem que participar, se engajar e ver se tem mercado para aquilo, entendeu? Acho que é por aí. É... Yeah. Não tem muito segredo. Tem, ou, tem que, ou, na verdade, tem um grande segredo. Eu acho que a Franz falou isso antes. Falou sobre isso antes, mas é realmente um negócio de relação. Então, você tem que começar em algum lugar e isso vai te levar em algum lugar. Você sabe? Há a pesquisa, há também ir para o Mundial de Montreal. Se você está fazendo algo que é mundo de música, mas muito grande, pode ser eletrônico, pode ser um mix de coisas. Só começa lá e você fala com as pessoas e você vai conversar com as pessoas. They'll just snowball to, uh, to something else. You know, and a little, little bit of research to go back to the uh, uh, Venezuela. The girl is not there anymore. But, you know, the, for example, in, um, <coughs> in Montreal, there's a, a big Latino community. And there's a radio show. So you just mm -hmm. Google it. You get, like, you know, Brazilian music or, you know, rock and roll music. If it's, if it's rock and roll and, and, you know, and in Portuguese that you do, you'll find a radio station. Some, some, Somebody will play a song or, you know, many songs from a, or have a specialty radio station uh, program. You just send a, one song there and it will it'll lead you somewhere. So that's the, that's the only way. That's how we do it. That's how we got here is just d do one little thing that brings you to another thing. You know, you're, you, you know more, peop more and more people, you know, so. You first. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just uh, to add, I think, like, you, j you just can't be lazy about it. It's like if you come to a conference then like read the website and see exactly what's happening or if you're if you're interested in a particular uh, city or country or festival then research that festival and see which artists have played there before get familiar with with that event get you know i mean it's not hard it's just you have to don't show up and not know anything about anything you know good familiarize yourself do yeah do your homework and then go with an open mind and you know be friendly and bring some business cards i guess <laughs> with streams no one likes cds don't give don't give us cds we don't like them i don't mind tem uma coisa importante também que as pessoas normalmente querem ir nos festivais nas coisas mais óbvias assim salto by salto to omex etc tem um monte de showcase festival muito mais legal e mais próximo que você encontra as pessoas com... Por exemplo, é, eu, se eu tivesse uma banda indie pop agora, eu não, ia, eu não pagaria para ir no South by South. Eu pagaria para ir no Pop Montreal. É, eu não iria na Womex. Eu iria num festival, na, num festival de world music na Alemanha. Ou, se eu tivesse uma banda sul-americana que queria um mercado, talvez, canadense, eu viria para assim, São Paulo. Porque, assim, tem umas coisas que são um pouco menos óbvias e que são mais legais, cara. Que, que você consegue um contato mais próximo. 
que você vai no Salto Baixo, você tem 5 bilhões de pessoas passando por você. Assim. É incrível como um passeio. É, mas é, é, é foda estabelecer um relacionamento quando tem 5 bilhões de pessoas buscando aquela vaguinha, entendeu? Talvez ir com mais detalhe, mais tranquilo, é mais legal. Estabelecer uma relação de, de, de cada vez. E uma coisa que o Daniel falou, que é muito importante, cara, as pessoas não se preparam para ir nas conferências. É... Ontem à noite, a pessoa que chegou aqui e pegou o programa ontem, tem que ler, tem que gulgar, tem que tirar essa semana para poder ir atrás de saber aquele cara que vai servir para ela. Porque é, é, é assim, é canseira, dá trabalho para caralho achar a pessoa certa. Mas uma hora acha. Às vezes, tem uma hora que você vai, vai achar e vai conectar e vai ser um negócio que vai durar 10, 12, 15 anos. É isso. Tem que ir tem que fazer a sua parte. Fazer a sua parte não é esperar um convite. O convite não vai acontecer, galera. Mesmo. Não adianta esperar, não vai rolar. I just wanted to add one quick thing, um, which is that um, uh, there are only so many people that actually run this business or make the decisions. There's a lot of us involved, but really there's not that many people that actually make these decisions. And most of everything else tends to funnel through a, a small amount of people um, and, and, and then get filtered down to all the rest. And so finding those key people is really essential. And uh, as an example to your question, um, I you know don't work with world music, I worked with one band that was kind of a little bit world music, but not so much. And I don't really work with like jazz or blues or, or guitar players or things like that. However, it, you know, it, it, the, you know the, the, the booker of Montreal International Jazz Festival, which is a huge festival that books all kinds of stuff, you know, is his best friend and my best friend and his best friend and his best friend, and we know them super well. So I have a stack you know, of CDs this big, which I will listen to, but once I'm done listening to them, probably 75% of them are not for me, and I'm going to take the ones I think are pretty good to really good, and I'm going to send them to Laurent at the festival. I'm going to say, you listen to this, or another festival, I'm going to say, you listen to this, because this is your thing. So sometimes, you know, just getting out there and meeting you know, good people can lead you to a place even if, at first glance, it didn't look like the right place. It can still lead you to a good place. Also, for most of this conference, we've been talking about, like, uh, like flying out to South by Southwest and, like, going to Canada and s try to make it there. But, like, I think, first and foremost, it's very important to grow an audience locally before trying to get out and, like... I mean, you gotta test your market first, and you can't expect to make it big in Canada if nobody knows you here. And so, yeah. Yeah, good, very good point. Yeah, very good point. Like sometimes, sometimes uh, you're you're not, you know, it doesn't work that much at home, and then you have to go out yeah. to, to to make it happen. But also, we we're just back from uh, from Fluvial, a new a new conference in Chile, which was amazing. Like. Uh, uh, Fabricio, you were telling, you know, a smaller conference place, like uh, it was in Valdivia in, in Chile, super small, so all the industry was there, plus the Australians, us, and other, like, Americans and uh, Spanish people, so it was amazing for that, you know, because we were all, uh, like, in a, we couldn't go anywhere but to the shows or to meet our other industry friends, so, uh, so I, I said you could look at that also, you know. I have a question for, for all Brazilians and all South Americans, actually, and I understand the But cultural and linguistic it's question. It's for him to, to ask or just to think? And, uh, uh, just think about it okay. or try and answer. Um, we just either way. Two more minutes okay, so here's the question. I understand Brazil is 200 million people that speak Portuguese and the rest of South America is, you know, 100, uh, et cetera, million people that speak Spanish and there's a competitiveness and a rivalry and all kinds of things historically. However... It seems to me that even within South America, you guys totally do not work together as much as you could. And it would help you all if you worked more together and were the power of South America rather than just individual countries that are struggling by yourselves. That's not a question. That's not a question, sorry. <laughs> uh, 
Dá para ter mais uma pergunta. Ou então, então que eu tenho que correr para casa do Mancha. Ah. Você, é, ela? Não? Uma pergunta? Posso perguntar? Por favor. Hello. Uh, just want to know how, how about reggae music in Canada and uh, hip hop? Uh, I want to know if there is a scene, like I, I have a label, uh, uh, I produce some artists in Brazil, release them, uh, but there is not a, really a, a market here in Brazil for, for this kind of music, reggae music, reggae. Reggae dub, dub music, live music, live reggae dub. in English or in uh, Portuguese? Uh, both, both, but in English especially. Reggae music is pretty uh, popular in like Toronto, in like um, in, in Ontario. Like just, you know, it's not, not reggae at all. But there's a, a very large, uh, Afri you know, African -am American uh, population, like black music, we can call it. Um, so stuff like The Weeknd and Drake that are pop also have their uh, equivalents in, in, in reggae and urban and R&B and soul. Um, so it's pretty popular there. Uh, it's not huge, but it's, it's healthy. Um, hip hop is huge. Um, especially on the English side, and has now become huge on the on the French side in Quebec. I mean, I'm going to let you know you answer this question because you guys actually you know you work with yeah hip hop you work with hip hop bands which I don't why not yeah I don't know much about reggae the reggae scene in Canada actually but uh, I work with one band from uh, Montreal who has a great career in Quebec but uh, they sing in French so. We don't expect them to go out in the rest of Canada or like in the U.S. to to make a career there, but uh, we're yeah we're really focusing in Quebec for them. Yeah, I think like hip hop in particular because it's such a language based art form, it's hard. It's it's a little more difficult to to sell like you know hip hop music outside of the language you know the particular language reggae. I mean, there's a very large Jamaican community in Toronto, a smaller one in Montreal. Usually the reggae that people consume is coming from Jamaica. There is a little bit of reggae from, you know, homegrown reggae. There's quite a, there's quite a decent scene, and Toronto is bigger, but Montreal has a scene. Um, but I think generally people are a little skeptical of reggae that's not from Jamaica. I don't know why. But I mean, I think there's there's definitely there's there's scenes for it for sure, and hip hop is everywhere. I'm know? asking because I, I also work with Jamaican artists. Okay, uh, cool. yeah. That's okay. É, amigos, é isso. Palma calorosa que diz que nós somos um povo caloroso. Não é isso? É é o último painel do dia. Então, podemos ir para a balada da noite, galera. Aproveitem, procurem as bandas canadenses. Os shows são muito legais. É, aproveitem para ver no breve, amanhã, na festa de Quebec, no showcases aqui. E é isso. Obrigado, jovens. Foi ótimo. Não deu para ouvir nada? Muito obrigado. De nada. Obrigado.